over 1,000 planets to explore, a custom spaceship that you can meticulously design, and enough sandwiches to make the grab jump and be back in time for supper. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're exploring the stars and talking spaceships, companions, and solar systems in Starfield. I'm excited to announce that Legacy Gaming is giving away copies of Starfield, and you can enter right now for your chance to win. To learn more, head over to our website, LegacyGaming.gg, and click on the News tab up top. Follow the instructions, enter for your chance to win, and good luck. If you're just checking out the channel for the first time, I'd recommend you take a peek at the first video in this series. It's a general overview of Starfield and includes important information about the story, the group known as Constellation, and character customization. To understand Starfield is to understand the heavens themselves, so let's next take a deep dive into outer space and everything that goes along with racing across the galaxy. If you didn't already know, Starfield's ambition is to create one of the most advanced and customizable shipbuilding systems ever, and that's apparent from the in-depth showcase by the developers. Everything starts at ship ports. This is where players will be able to interact with an NPC known as a ship technician, and it's here where you'll be able to repair, modify, buy, sell, and hire crew for your vessel. It's an essential gateway to all things ships, because as you'll come to find out, they come in all shapes and sizes, and it's impossible to have just one. Within the port, you'll notice that you can maintain a fleet of ships. The number has fluctuated throughout the years, so my best guess is that you'll be able to upgrade your fleet size, and that's good because as you build or commandeer ships, you'll want to add them to your collection to either keep or sell. Ships themselves are complicated, and before we dive into customization, I think we should start with a general overview of their capabilities. Each has a number of different systems to consider, including lasers, electromagnetics, ballistics, and missiles making up your offensive systems, and hull and shields making up your defensive systems. Then there are secondary systems like cargo and max crew, which determine how much loot you can haul and how many companions can help operate and maintain your ship. In terms of flyability, there are a number of other things to consider, such as jump range, mobility, top speed, and mass. All of this is influenced by the individual parts, both quality and quantity, you put on your ship. And as far as we know, there are 13 categories players will have access to. Cowling, shield generators, dockers, fuel tanks, grab drives, weapons, habs, engines, cockpits, cargo holds, reactors, bays, and landing gear. If you're someone that just wants to fire up the thrusters and head into space, you can do that. If you'd prefer a little more customization, mainly just to upgrade your ship with the best parts, you can do that too. For players that want to customize absolutely everything, there's the shipbuilder mode. I'm already worried I'll never actually leave the spaceport because I'll be too busy messing around with the customization for hours on end. In this mode, you'll have near endless options for how you design your ship, from the individual parts to the variants of that part, giving you the exact look and functionality that you want. Similar to systems in other games, there are also distinct manufacturers of ship parts, and they each have their own unique aesthetic, ranging from top-of-the-line futuristic to sloppy jalopy. Really, your only limitation is your creativity. Keep in mind that the parts you place on your ship go beyond stats. It's about in-game functionality as well. For example, your hab directly impacts how many crew members can be assigned to operate the ship. Other things like crafting workstations and the armory are also tied to specific parts, so while it is all about stats, it's also about how you'll use your ship when adventuring across the galaxy. Shipbuilder mode not only lets you see statistics on individual parts, but also real-time information about your ship as a whole as it's being built, so you know exactly what you get with each part you put on or take off. Players will also have near-unlimited color control. Based on the June Starfield direct footage, it's clear that each individual part can be colored based on a player's preference, and that makes for some pretty hilarious builds. When your build is complete, it's time to take to the stars, and while we haven't seen a ton of uncut footage from inside the ship once we have liftoff, we have seen some exciting space combat, and that's worth talking about. Each cockpit has its own unique vibe and viewport, and while functionally they're most likely the same, there's a certain flair to each design that will absolutely speak to players on an individual level. 
Once your butt is squarely in the captain's chair, the controls are at your fingertips. And here again, we see some familiar UI elements that are pulled directly from the shipbuilder interface. In the bottom left hand corner, you'll see your ship systems, and this will vary depending on what weapons your ship has on board. In this case, we see LAS for lasers, VAL for ballistics, and EM for electromagnetic. On the right side of that panel, we see ENG for engines, SHD for shields, and GRV for grav drive. During spaceflight, you can actually divert power to various subsystems to increase their effectiveness. For example, if you're trying to escape a pirate ambush, you can allocate power to your engines, making you faster. Likewise, if you allocate points to your grav drive, the time it takes to make a jump will be significantly reduced. It's a powerful, dynamic system that will allow you more control when it matters the most. Moving to the right side of the screen, we see a readout of the ship's hull health and shield strength, both important pieces of information we'll need at a glance. Finally, in the center of the screen is an important HUD that displays information about your weapon systems, speed and boost readouts, and details about enemy ships that are within your sight picture. As you can see in this brief clip, as the player is firing, both the lasers and ballistic weapons are being used and the number is going down. Much like an FPS game, your weapons will need a period to cool down or reload before they can be used again, emphasizing the importance of having the right weapons, and potentially crew on your ship. As far as the actual combat is concerned, I think it's safe to say the gameplay leans more towards arcadey and less towards simulation. I'm sure there will be a fair number of joystick flyers and star citizen enjoyers out there, but the developers have said time and time again, their goal for the game from exploration to space combat is fun. And that's exactly what it looks like here. Players will have the ability to target lock enemy ships with the right weapons, of course, and their standard ordnance will be guided by a simple tracking system that will anticipate an enemy ship's movement so you can aim with relative ease. If you have the targeting control system skill in the tech tree, you'll even be able to lock onto individual enemy subsystems, giving you more flexibility with how you approach a space fight. If you choose to take out a ship, that's great, and you can loot the cargo right from the cockpit of your ship. But if you prefer to keep your fighting skills sharp, then you can choose to board an enemy ship and take the fight right to them. Once cleared, not only is the enemy cargo yours, but the ship is too, and you can take it to any spaceport and claim it as your own. If you want to keep and upgrade any of your newly acquired ships, you'll need to register them, which costs credit, a system recently discussed by Todd Howard in a recent interview with Kinda Funny Games. You could choose to simply sell the ship, but based on what we've seen in the various trailers, there's bound to be a flashy spaceship worth claiming as your own. If you're someone that prefers a more peaceful approach to their RPGs, then you'll be happy to know you can hail other ships, chat about ongoing events, exchange rumors, and even engage in trade. There's no underselling it. Space exploration is one of the major draws for Starfield. The idea of exploring new worlds, becoming a ruthless pirate, and creating your own spaceship is just something no game has ever been able to fully achieve. As a huge fan of the space combat in Star Wars Battlefront 2, I'm really excited to experience that aspect of Starfield. It's a clear step up from Battlefront, but a much needed step down from Star Wars Squadrons, which leaned a bit too much on the simulation side of things, at least for me. Even someone like Livid, who is a huge fan of Star Citizen, finds the more casual approach to space combat to be enticing. Now, dogfighting in space is all well and good, but to truly master the stars, you need to actually, you know, travel them. And this is where your navigation console comes into play. On each ship is a terminal that will help you plot a course across the heavens. And this is where all that tweaking of your ship's components comes into play. For now, we're going to focus on traveling between stars, the most macro view of space travel in the game. From your star map, you'll be able to see each of the systems in the region. At a glance, you'll know what the name of the central star is and some basic statistics about that star, including spectral class, catalog ID, temperature and mass, just to name a few. More importantly, you'll be able to see how many planets and moons are in that system, as well as outposts. From your current location, you can plot a course for distant planets so long as your ship is up to the task. In order for you to make a grav jump, your ship will need to have optimal cargo that is not over the maximum threshold, as well as enough fuel to make the complete jump. If your ship doesn't have an advanced enough grav drive, then you won't be able to make the jump and you'll have to hopscotch your way to your destination or upgrade your ship until you can make the desired jump. Once you find a location that's within range of your ship's capabilities, it's time to punch in. And from the comfort of your cockpit, you'll enter a few coordinates, watch the timer count down, and off you go from one system to another. 
It's also worth pointing out that when you arrive in populated areas like space operated by the United Colonies, your ship will get scanned for contraband. We don't know much about smuggling in Starfield, but shoot, if I can steal a whole bunch of loot and offload it planet side, that sounds like a great way to make some credits. Hopefully we'll learn more about this system before launch. Now we've alluded to it already, but one important aspect of navigating the stars is having a crew of companions alongside you to help with the heavy lifting. It's unclear at this time exactly how much influence each companion will have while in space, but we do know they're valuable allies in the search to unravel the secrets of the galaxy. We've already been introduced to some of the companions you'll meet along the way, like Sarah Morgan, the head of Constellation, but every member of the group can be recruited and they each bring with them an important set of skills. Much like the skills you develop as a player, each of the companions you recruit also come with proficiencies in a set of skills. For example, Sam Coe, another member of Constellation, has four points in piloting, three points in rifle certification, two points in payloads, and one point in geology. It's clear based on this that companions like Sam will impact both space travel and combat, as well as augment your skill set when on a planet's surface, or when they're assigned to an outpost. More on that later. Sadly, right now, the true extent of their gameplay impact is unknown, but it's something I'm most eager to learn more about. As is typical in a Bethesda game, key companions, the one that you could consider major players in the game, have a lot more depth to them than some of the lesser companions. Throughout your travels, the four main constellation companions will offer unique quest lines, and if you're someone that longs for a little space companionship, those same four NPCs can be romanced if that's your thing. If you're looking to expand your crew, you can find additional companions at spaceports, and they can be hired to help maintain your ship or one of your outposts. The decision is yours if you choose to let them accompany you or waste away in the deepest regions of space. Your entire roster of companions can be maintained from one simple menu, which is a great quality of life feature that will hopefully make managing dozens of NPCs a breeze. Here, you can see their skills, where they're assigned, and make any changes necessary as captain and commander of your crew. There's no denying it, your spaceship will be central to your adventures in Starfield, and I'd even go so far as to say, it's your second home. You'll spend hours aboard one of your most likely many ships, maintaining your crew, plotting courses for distant planets, all while solving the greatest mysteries of the galaxy. There is so much more to unpack ahead of Starfield's launch, and we'll be tackling it all, so if Starfield is on your radar and you're excited about more videos like this in your feed, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, and consider subscribing. Our team plans on covering Starfield from top to bottom, so be sure to keep it right here for more content. We also invite you to join us on Discord. Our community of nearly 20,000 strong is a great place to hang out, talk about games, win free prizes, and group up. If that's something you're interested in, check out the link below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.